Well, this definitely isn't gonna be the original video that I had planned for the Micronix Micron Desktop SLS 3D printer. If you didn't already hear the news, they were acquired by Formlabs. And their Kickstarter campaign, which was ending in the next few days and had amassed over $1.3 million in funding is unfortunately canceled. And I wanna talk about this whole entire crazy announcement as well as some of the massive backlash that I've seen online about it. But more importantly, I wanna talk with you about my experience of trying to 3D print with this, some of the challenges that I've had with it, as well as one potential amazing deal for anyone that originally backed this campaign that you should at least consider looking at. So this is the Micron. It's again, an SLS 3D printer that works with powder for 3D printing. So there's a lighted chamber here that's gonna help heat up your uh, the build chamber there. And then there's the powder where it's gonna be used a laser diode or something along those lines to laser etch into the actual powder to create the 3D object. And what's really cool about this entire process is that it doesn't require supports for your prints. So in theory, you can just really maximize and stack as many different objects as you want inside the build volume of the printer and print them all without worrying about things like supports. And what's even crazier to me is that this entire system was developed by Henry and Luke, who are two recent college grads that wanted to find a way to make this a more affordable 3D printing experience. Typically, these machines cost upwards of $50,000 or higher, and there are much larger larger machines, at least what I've seen in the past. I've never seen really anything desktop oriented that's gonna allow you to get access to this technology. And they've really designed this from the ground up. And what was so amazing to me is that this was the perfect example of someone that should be using Kickstarter as a platform to launch their 3D printer, gain funding to help get this developed and actually pushed out into the marketplace. But all that's now changed thanks to Form Labs picking them up and acquiring them. And you'll notice I have a whole bunch of different parts here that represent this entire system here. So we have the actual printer that inside this has a uh, chamber that has a whole bunch of lights in top. Again, I'm not a technical person like some of the other amazing creators that have received these. Uh, then there's the actual chamber here that you're gonna pour all of the different material into. And there's also a glass plate on the top, which I have been oh so careful handling because I've been super paranoid about this breaking. There's also some kind of intricate design here along top. I'm not entirely sure how that's all functions, but there's basically an auger inside that's gonna take some of the powder that's inside the machine and pull it up to the top surface. And then there's another thing that helps level it out so that when the laser diode goes over everything, it has a flat surface for it to actually start printing against. And as you can see, everything here is pretty robust and honestly fairly well designed for an early prototype that they sent to me and a few others. I was not anticipating it being this far along, in all honesty. I've seen some definite other prototype units where it's kind of hodgepodge together, but this is really well engineered, at least in my very basic understandings. But what's really cool is that they also included a whole bunch of different 3D printed parts and objects that you're gonna use alongside these printers, or you were going to. And this is where you saw some of the other folks that had received these had run into issues where some of their things broke in shipping. I thankfully did not have any of those issues and was able to use these. Like this is a scoop that I can use after a print's finished. I can come in here and scoop up the print out of that. And then this is a sifting bin that I can put the, the print in and start sifting it out to get your prints out of, and then reuse some of the powder that I could pour it back into this whole machine so you can reuse some of it. There's a whole lot involved with this entire process that's entirely new to me, but very exciting. And obviously Form Labs coming in and buying this for any of the backers or folks that were just in general interested in this is kind of a bummer, but keep in mind that Form Labs isn't this huge monolith organization. They started off with a Kickstarter 3D printer not that long ago and have uh, yes, they have some very expensive machines. I don't own any yet, but hopefully one day soon I will. And we'll talk about that here soon. But I, I think this could end up lending itself to a better overall product than what we have here. My biggest concern for this Kickstarter campaign was just them fulfilling on the pledges for these units. That's a huge undertaking in itself. And in trying to do that in less than a year, I honestly did not see that really 
happening. Also, they just have the two of them and they need to bring on more employees. How are you going to do support? How are you going to do replacement parts? There are things that are inevitably going to break in shipping, which we already saw. They had some Kickstarter stretch goals where they were going to actually have some things manufactured if they were going to hit those goals. I honestly don't think that they were going to hit those. There was only a few days left in the campaign. And at the point they canceled it, they were at 1.3 million, which is fantastic. But that's still only uh, from based on the data that I could see on the Kickstarter campaign, it says that there are 431 backers. However, there are only 367 actual visible backers for the campaign and 26 of those were just for t-shirts. So uh, that's still not a huge number of backers for a 3D printer. This is great for those two gentlemen, but my concern was actually being able to deliver on this. It's gonna be really hard with that small set of numbers to go into a full scale production for these products without having hundreds upon hundreds of people funding that project. And the concern that I had that I don't really see a lot of people talking about in all the discourse that's gone online about the announcement that Formlabs acquiring them is would this have actually been a successful Kickstarter campaign? I honestly don't know. I definitely have had issues getting mine to work. They have been really helpful with trying to have me remotely run some tests with this to get it back up and running. They were in uh, all, all honesty, they were definitely busy with the last week or so with all of the back end stuff that was going on with Formlab. So I completely understand not being able to get back to me and fully help troubleshoot some of the issues that I was having with this and getting things printed. It just seems like it would be a massive hurdle and undertaking to get this through to the finish line and actually get all of the units delivered to people. There are other 3D printing companies that have been a little bit more well established that are still dragging their feet on delivering on 3D printers from their campaigns that they've launched over a year ago. The other big comment that I see a lot of folks talking about online is, uh, you know, the, the how upset they are that Formlabs acquired them. Again, there were only uh, at most 431 people that backed this campaign at the beginning of a campaign is typically when you see the most activity of backers for it. And then towards the very end is where you'll see another spike typically with backers. So there might be another 100 people that might have backed this and the end. That's still only around 500 people that have backed this campaign. And it is still a pretty expensive 3D printer. The retail price for this was going to be over $4,000 for this machine. So it's still extremely expensive compared to most other 3D printers that are out in the marketplace, which is outpacing itself and outpricing itself for my typical needs. And even myself, when I was so excited to get my hands on this, and by the way, let me just give you a background. They reached out to me about doing a video on this and showing off 3D printing goofy, some of the, you know, cosplay goofy things that I like 3D printing with this. And I was very excited about it. But once I actually got my hands on working with it, I was quickly realizing this more than likely is not for me. It's not going to be for a lot of you that typically watch my videos. This is a much much more uh, business oriented, in my opinion, 3D printer than something that would be for just consumer hobbyist projects. And as you know, I do a lot of resin 3D printing and resin 3D printing is pretty messy and it's not exactly the best health wise for you. So you've got to take some precautions with that. This takes that to a whole nother level of just how messy it is to work with, how much space you're going to need for all of this different equipment. Not to mention, I also ended up buying a media blaster and you need to buy the, uh, the media to actual blast with, and you need an air compressor to actually be able to blast the things. Uh, I think Joel, the 3d printing nerd showed off on Twitter. Initially, he was able to print some things with his the very beginning, but didn't have the media blaster and the quality of those objects just obviously did not look very good. That's where you're going to get the most bang for your buck when it comes to actually cleaning those things off. But it's it's this whole other workflow and process that's very or detail oriented that you're going to have to go through. And even then, the print quality, while it was good, it wasn't anything better than I was getting from a resin 3D printer or potentially an FDM 3D printer. But obviously, the benefit comes from not being able to print with supports or it being a little bit more durable than we have with your typical 3D prints or resin 3D prints. But it's still not like indestructible or metal or anything like that. As an example, they sent me these little uh, it's like a box with a ball inside of it that free prints and, and rolls around. But you can you know, with enough pressure, you can <laughs> you can still come in here and break these by hand, but they're still pretty durable. Also, random note, uh, this uh, unit right here, the metal unit, it needs some kind of padding on the bottom. This has scratched the living 
hell out of my tabletop surfaces here. But when it actually comes to printing, I was only able to run the initial test set of prints that they provided to me. I've not been able to run anything else. And even those test set of prints, I had some enormous challenges with actually getting those cleaned up. It ended up Printing, I thought initially just fine. Everything set up and went together just fine. However, it ended up as a one basically solid brick that I was not able to break free. I ended up having to take a screwdriver and chisel away at it to help break up some of that solid powder pancake that I ended up with here as a print. I then bought a media blaster and the media that goes with that, hooked it up to my air compressor and then started blasting away at these prints. And that took a solid 30 to 40 minutes of me blasting away at these prints to get them to the point that I have now, which still isn't quite as detailed as what I saw from their sample prints that they sent me. So again, I think it had to come down to the settings that I was working with for those initial demo prints. And then when I went to re rerun that, this is where I ran into further issues where I tried lowering the temperature based on their suggestion. However, the machine just wouldn't print. And the one of the biggest challenges is that it takes anywhere between 15 to 20 minutes for that first initial layer to start printing. And since it failed and I had to stop the print, I then had to wait for this machine to cool down, which took another 30 minutes to an hour for me to be able to actually even be able to handle anything and clean it all out and then start the print over again. And I did that three or four times and it just continued to fail. And this is where we're at right now with this, unfortunately. So I'm hopefully gonna continue to work with them and figure this out. I would, I know they're gonna be really busy, but I would love to actually get this working and printing something so it's not just sitting here collecting dust so that I can actually show off some cool SLS prints. You also see on one of the test tag prints that they sent me where one was, I was able to clean off really nice and well. The other still has a huge chunk of just solid powder on there. There we go, that I can snap off if I really need to. I'm honestly super excited and happy for Luke and Henry. And actually, I think there's a third person that's part of the crew there. I, I'll have to go back and look, but uh, yeah, I'm really excited for them that Form Labs was able to come in and pick them up. I, I know there's a lot of skepticism around this, but I think in the end, if Form Labs continues to actually try and get this produced and put out into the market in the next few years, this could be the best possible scenario. And yes, it's gonna be more expensive than what was available on the Kickstarter, that's inevitable. But we're not gonna have 3D printed plastic bins that you're gonna be working with. And hopefully it'll just be a better all overall experience of working with this in the process of SLS 3D printing and not cost $20,000. I think Form Labs has another machine that does SLS printing and it's fairly expensive as most of their resin 3D printers are, but, this could potentially be a much better win in the end for anybody that is really interested in this than backing this campaign and then potentially waiting two years for it and it not working and you struggling to get replacement parts and the support that they would have to have scaled up to support all these 3D printers. Form Labs is gonna be able to just come in and immediately help with that. Fingers crossed it actually proceeds to be produced. We'll see. Well, it's a waiting game at this point. Now, for anyone that actually backed this printer on the Kickstarter, that as part of this whole deal, so yes, the campaign was canceled. Everyone that backed the campaign is all of their money's being fully refunded, and Form Labs is providing everyone with a thousand dollars credit to their store. And I think it was like a uh, a universal material license, which is normally like two thousand dollars. Again, their printers are very expensive, but there is a potential amazing deal on their site for a refurbished form three, I believe it is, that comes out to $250 after using that $1,000 credit. So I think that potentially is a solid win for anybody that's interested in a Form 3 3D printer. Obviously it's refurbished or whatever that may be. I don't know if that's definitely gonna work, so I'll have to go through that process and see. Fingers crossed I can find somebody that will actually work with me that backed the campaign that doesn't want it because I'm interested in picking up one of those and checking out one of the Form Labs 3D printers and making some videos around that and just seeing in general how that compares to these lower end 3D printers price wise that I end up showing off here on the channel. But let me know your thoughts on this whole situation. I know it's not ideal and ideally this would have gone through the whole Kickstarter campaign. It would have ended and it was funded and uh, they would have delivered in the next nine months, which is just insane to me. But <laughs> if that all went through, obviously that would have been amazing, but it's not where we're at right now. And 
I honestly am very excited for Henry and Luke. I think this is like, I can't imagine how much stress they were going through sleepless nights. I was on multiple WebEx conferences with them and literally their apartment room or one of their bedrooms, it looks like one of their testing areas as well. So it's just crazy. And again, congratulations to the Micronics team. 99% of the people that are out there complaining if they were in your exact same shoes would have taken the offer as well. So fingers crossed, this isn't the last time that we've seen the Micron and we'll get a future update here at some point in the future. I want to say thanks so much for watching. Let me know what you think about this whole situation. Uh, I want to say thank you to my Patreon supporters for your continued support of me making videos here. If you're interested in things like my 3D printer settings, uh, yeah, I have those over my Patreon. But uh, yeah, this was a different one. Definitely not the video that I had in mind. <laughs> For this, for the Micron, I wanted to make some cool stuff. If I can get this up and running, let me know what kind of crazy things that you would be interested in seeing me print with this. Specifically, I was gonna be trying to print some airless basketballs as well as a fully functional Wolverine set of claws that I've done in PLA before, but obviously having those in this powdered SLS material would be a lot cooler. Hey, thanks so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Also, I just realized I never really explained why I'm posting my video now and not previously. Yeah, they asked me to hold off on posting till towards the end of the Kickstarter campaign. It worked out great for me because I was traveling, working on a bunch of projects. I had a family vacation. I had rapid TCT, which was absolutely amazing. So when I got back from all of that, I started trying to get this 3D printer back up and running again. That's where I ran into the extra print issues here.